Hey, this is Steve and I'm hanging out in the yard with Olive and we're talking guardianship legal terms and glossaries. Based on my experience representing clients in guardianship cases, here are the five terms that you need to know. The ward. The person for whom the guardianship petition is filed is called the ward. In the case of special needs parents, this is your child. The ward is one of the most frequently used terms in a guardianship proceeding. For a parent, it sounds a little, well, cold, even demeaning. But don't take offense to it, it's just the court's way of identifying a person who's the subject of the guardianship. Petition and petitioner. When people use the word petition, frequently they're talking about a document that many people sign to get some authority figure to make some kind of change. It tends to have a somewhat negative connotation. In the case of guardianship, Petition is merely a fancy word for an application. It's the formal written document you file with the court that asks the court to begin a guardianship process for your child. As a person filing the petition, you may be referred to as the petitioner. In the context of guardianship, this word's connotation is neither negative nor positive. Letters. This isn't a note that you send in the mail to your cousin. Letters is the official legal document given to you by the court when your application for guardianship, remember that's called your petition, is approved by the court. The letters, also called the letters of guardianship, is a document that you'll bring with you to doctor appointments and meetings with other important people with whom you'll deal with on behalf of your child as their guardian. Guardian Advocate. You know that you need to get guardianship for your child when they turn 18, but what you may not know is that if your child has a developmental disability, there's an expedited process for getting guardianship in Florida called Guardian Advocate. You end up with the same rights as a traditional guardianship, but if your child has a disability such as autism, spina bifida, Down syndrome, or an IQ lower than 70, the judge can grant guardianship from a doctor's diagnosis and an IEP as opposed to appointing a panel to determine your child's competency. Oh, and one more thing. Unlike traditional guardianship, in most cases, there's no need to hire a lawyer to become a guardian advocate. Oath. Many of the documents you file with the court must be signed under oath. What's important about this isn't the procedure for signing, but the consequences for lying. You'll have to answer many personal questions in your guardianship application. Always answer truthfully. If it's discovered that you intentionally lied to the court, you could be subject to criminal prosecution for perjury. There are dozens of other terms you should be familiar with. Check them all out in our list below.